For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Death is coming. Death is sure. The wages of sin is death. You will die. You will wake up into eternity. Life after death from the Bible states that there is a heaven or there is a hell. Hell is by anything you want to do outside what God says to do. Heaven is by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, for Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You have to do something before you die. And you don't know when you will die. So the Bible says, now is the day of salvation. Now. God said, come, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. If you die in your sin, you will open your eyes in a place called hell where you will pay for your sin. But if you choose the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world as your payment for sin, you will be absent from the body and present with the Lord. For there is no other name given amongst men whereby ye must be saved. That name is the blessed name, Jesus Christ, the blessed hope, the Son of God, who is God. And God is Jesus Christ, according to Acts 20:28. 20, when God's blood purchased sin upon Calvary's tree. Refusal and denial of what we are preaching out of the Bible, that God saves, Jesus saves, rejecting what God has said, will put you off into hell for eternity. We are here because the Bible says in Mark 16, Go eat all the world and preach the gospel. We are warning you, up ahead of your life, the bridge is out. Unless you bridge that gap by Jesus Christ and the cross at Calvary, you will fall into eternal doom, eternal judgment, the lake of fire which burneth forever. Hell is not a pleasant message, but hell is your future without Jesus Christ. We preach to you that you may believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved that you don't go to hell. Psalms chapter 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the ways of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth fruit, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. To be a living tree that produces fruit with life of leaves, the Bible says you need the water. And Jesus Christ said, I am the water of life. Is that Jerry? I thought that was Jerry. Jesus Christ 
is the living water. Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ will result in you not perishing. You'll die, but you'll be absent from the body present with the Lord. By the word of God there is life, and life more abundant, and that word is the Lord Jesus Christ. You can be a living, fruitful tree. You can be blessed. One that will walk in what the Bible tells you to do. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Now, the Bible is much different from religion. Religion doesn't follow the book. Religion follows man. Religion kills. Jesus saves. Religion is man-made. Jesus Christ is God-approved. And to be a blessed man by God, you must do what God tells you to do. And God says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Out of the words of Jesus himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So the only means to God in heaven is Jesus by his own word. Psalms 1. The ungodly are not so. That is most of you right here in my voice. You have not done what God's told you to do. You have rejected what God's told you to do. You have rejected His Son. You have rejected His Word. The ungodly are not so, but are like chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. You'll stand before God, because the Bible says, Prepare to meet thy God. You will stand before the great white throne judgment, guilty. As God will tell you to go jump into the lake of fire, which burneth forever, Revelation chapter 20. And God never attended hell for man. Because Jesus said, hell was made for Satan and his angels. But since man does not want to do what God tells him to do, since Adam and Eve... Your free will has brought you into a place that was never designed for you. And yet, because you disobeyed God, you have rebelled against God, He sent His Son to die on the cross that you may have life. In the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus died for your sins according to the Scriptures. He was buried. And he arose again the, th the third day according to the scriptures, and over 500 people witnessed the resurrected Jesus Christ. That is the gospel, the good news of your salvation, the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. To pay for your sins, the Lamb of God without spot, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. That is what God wants you to believe on, to be saved. He wants you to believe on His Son, minus nothing, not of works, least any man should boast. It is a free gift of God that you may have eternal life, and that gift is Jesus Christ. And the free will is that you may receive it, or you may choose to reject it. I advise you to take that gift, open it up, and cherish that gift, Jesus Christ. Because when you do that, you'll be blessed. When you do that, you'll have life. When you do that, you won't go into hell. When you do that, you will die and be in the presence of the one that died for you, the one that was risen from the grave, the one that created you, Jesus Christ. Salvation is of Jesus Christ and no other. I am not asking you to be a Baptist. I'm not asking you for money. I am 
I'm not going to tell you to do flip-flops. I'm going to tell you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. I tell you again, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Jesus said, ye must be born again. It's a must, but God will give you a free will. You must be born again, but then again, you don't think it's a must. You think it's a must not. And if you must not be born again, you will be in the lake of fire, which burneth forever. But if you must be born again, you will have eternal life. By Jesus Christ. And notice how I keep saying Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Because that's the only way. I'm not mentioning denominations. I'm not mentioning religions. I'm mentioning a name. The name Christ Jesus. Which means Jehovah saves. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. If you have not been washed of your sins, you will not stand in my presence in New Jerusalem, the Bible says. If you have not come to Jesus to be washed of your sins, you will not be in our congregation. You'll be in the congregation of hell. See, all have sinned. The wages of sin is death. One sin. There is one sin that will put you into hell. One. And it's not sodomy. It's not stealing. It's not voting for Hillary. The only sin that will put you into hell is rejecting Jesus Christ as your Savior. The question comes, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? If you have not been washed in the Lamb of God, you are not clean. You are not a Christian. You are not even saved unless you are washed in the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. And you may say, how self-centered are you? I didn't say that. The Bible, Jesus Christ said that. Jesus is the one that said, John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth. And the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So you that choose to reject Jesus Christ, here at the Daytona Beach Farmer's Market, you choose to reject God's free gift. You may be in a congregation of me right now, but you will not be in a congregation in heaven according to Psalms chapter 1. You'll be in your own congregation called the lake of fire which burneth forever. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Those are the words from Jesus Christ. Suffer the little children to come unto me, Jesus said. You are to bring your children to Jesus Christ. You have failed as a parent if you don't bring your children to Jesus that they may get saved. You are a failure. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. The Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. The Lord knows what I'm doing right now. And I am pleasing the Lord, for the Bible says, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Yes, amen. Not healing, not money, not the church, but the gospel. That Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. He was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is pleasing to God. Your
your religion makes God sick. Being good. I'm a good person. The Bible says there is none good. No, not one. So when you come to God and say, I'm good, you violated the Bible. There is none good. There is none that's seeking after God. Look around you. As the world will say, where is the masses of people hanging out with you? They're not here. For broad is the way that leads to destruction. Here's the broad way right here. The broad way which leads to hell is the Daytona Beach Farmer's Market. Because look at all you just going about your business, going about your duties, going about your commerce, and you don't care what God says. You don't care about your soul. You don't want to think about the eternal life. And you think I come here to be a nuisance. And yet I come in here with more love that's ever been shown because I'm trying to tell you what to do before you die. I'm trying to stop you from going into eternal hell that's burning forever that leads to torment, tormenting, and being tormented forever. I'm trying to stop you from burning. I'm trying to stop you from suffering. And how do you stop? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's that simple. It's a message that's been preached since 34 AD and has not changed. Though the world and churches have changed it. Now what the church and the worldliness does, that, that doesn't make no difference. That's still the way that leads to hell. I said a prayer is you going to hell because you have not truly believed on Jesus. I went to church. Well, good. So did all the popes. And they're in hell burning. I was religious. So was Adolf Hitler. And he's in hell. As with Joseph Smith, as with Mary Baker Eddy. Now, any of the people I just mentioned by name, if before they died they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, as their atonement for their sins alone, the blood of the Jesus Christ cleansed them, then they are in heaven just as much as I am in heaven. Heaven's not by what you are, it's what you did. Hell is not by all oh, wicked, nasty, perverted people. No, hell is by what you didn't do. You didn't believe and trust and put your faith in the atonement of the finished work of Jesus Christ. If any pope believed truly on the Lord Jesus Christ outside of Mary and the traditions of the church and believed that his soul is being saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, that his sins are washed upon the Calvary's tide of blood, then he's in heaven. But if somebody has gone to church their entire life, bribed all their money, did everything that man told them to do, except believed on Jesus Christ, he will die in his sins, and he will burn in hell in the lake of fire which burns for eternity. There's only two kinds of people in the world. Psalms 1 says... Blessed is the man that walketh not in the constant ungodly, the righteous man. Or there's the ungodly man. You're one of two. 
You can't be a third. You're going to heaven or you're going to hell. There is no purgatory. Purgatory is a place where you can make money as a religion. Psalms chapter 1. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Now what did I start off with? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. And yet Psalm says the ungodly man shall perish. How do you become godly? According to John 3.16. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. How do you become ungodly? Don't believe in Jesus Christ. Believe in anything or don't believe. That's okay. See, hell is by rejecting Jesus Christ. Heaven's by believing in Jesus Christ. There's nothing more. There's nothing I need to add to salvation. I can get up right now and preach Acts 16.31 5,000 times, and that's what you need to do to be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. The gospel, over and over, Christ died for our sins, according to Scripture. No one... No human beings ever died according to Scripture. There is nothing about your life the Bible says about you. You're not that important. Yet the Bible proclaimed 48 prophecies about Jesus Christ from the day that he was born to the day that he rose from the grave. And all 48 prophecies has been fulfilled, and there are much more prophecies yet to be fulfilled that will be fulfilled. So when we say that Jesus died according to the Scriptures, Jesus' death upon the cross was fulfilled what God wanted him to do for you. Because you can't do it. You cannot save yourself. You're not good enough. And if you dare to say, I'm good, my religion's good, and then you're saying Jesus Christ is worthless. That the gospel, that the gospel is none effect. Because when Jesus died on that cross according to the scriptures, he said your religion can't do it. He said you can't do it. I mean, what's the going rate for adultery today if you're going to pay God? You're not going to have your wallet as a judgment. You'll be stark naked before God. There's nowhere to put your wallet. You can't take the money with you. There is nothing that you can take with you to the grave. So how are you going to buy off God? You're not going to get to the pearly gates and find Peter there with a sign that said MasterCard, Visa, or American Express. The only way you're going to get into the gates of heaven is by the blood of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. That's it. That's the only payment to get into glory is the precious blood of Jesus Christ without spot. And Acts 20:28 20, says that blood was God's blood. How are you going to do better than that? How is your religion going to overdo God's blood being shed for you? This gospel is for you that Jesus said, Suffer the little children to come unto me. You to bring your children to Jesus Christ that they may be saved. You're not to teach them anything else but the saving grace of God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Look around you. Death is alive. Death is all around. People 
up today never woke up in this earth, but woke up somewhere in eternity. Last Sunday morning, 2.30 in the morning, how many people woke up in eternity, either heaven or hell? I don't care what their sins were. If those people believed on Jesus Christ, they are in heaven. If they rejected Jesus Christ, they are right now burning in hell. For rejecting Jesus Christ, not because of sodomy, not because of drinking, not because of drugs, not because of adultery, but because they are a sinner and they rejected Jesus Christ, they are burning in hell. But any of those people that were killed believed on the Lord Jesus Christ in their time, in their life, they're in heaven right now. See, adultery, murder, theft, lying, stealing, makes you a sinner. But the ultimate sin is, are you going to believe on Jesus Christ to cleanse you of what sinner you are? Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. It didn't say sin. There's no good sins, there's no bad sins. It's all sin. All have come short of glory of God. There is none righteous. No, not one. Are you a living, believing, uh, living, breathing human? Then you are a sinner. Are you born of a woman? Then you are a sinner. And being born of a woman, Jesus said, you need to be born again. That Christ died for us according to the scripture. For you. For me. They buried him. As they do with most dead people. Most dead people will be buried in the ground or at sea. You do that with a dead body. You bury it. You don't want it hanging around. So they took the body of Jesus, haphazardly, in a hurry, wrapped his body up and placed it in the tomb. we got to hurry up. The Sabbath day is coming. If you know your Bible. And they put a seal on that tomb. Because they didn't want to make you think that someone came and stole the body. All right, Roman government. So Herod had his troops put a seal and a watch on that tomb. And they watched. And they watched. And nothing happened. And they talked. They talked about their plans. They, they just gabbled along. Nothing happened. And on the third day, the earth quaked. And the rock rolled. See, you people want to hear rock and roll. I'm telling you about the rock that rolled. That rolled from the tomb of Jesus Christ as he came out alive and well. Thank you. Thank you. See, the rock rolled. I didn't say rock and roll. I said the rock rolled. According to the scriptures, Jesus Christ arose from the grave. What pope did that? What pastor did that? What reverend ever came out of the grave? Mary Baker's Eddie's telephone has not rang yet. They're still waiting for her to call. I guess there's no telephone service in hell. But the scripture says that Jesus arose from the grave because he is God. And he finished the gospel by coming out of that grave. And 500 people saw his resurrected body with the nail prints in his hands and the nail prints 
hands and his feet and the wound in his side declare my God. How's that, Jehovah Witness? Jehovah Witnesses, there's 144,000 in the book of Revelation, no more. Oops! Jesus didn't come in 1914. Jesus didn't come in 1925. Get off! But the scriptures say that Jesus died. They buried him. The scriptures say he was to rise from the dead. And he did. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father right now since the book of Acts. Now you tell me what you can do to top what Jesus has done for you for salvation. I'm waiting. You bring your religion, I'll tell you what your religion can do. You bring that you're a good person, I'll tell you what your good person can do. You believe your atheistic view about God, I can tell you what you can do with atheism. You can say, I'm an agnostic, I just don't know. I can tell you what you can do with your agnostic. But you come to me as a sinner, saying, I want God to be pleased with me, I don't know how, I want to be right with God, and I will open the Bible and tell you what God tells you to do. Come on out! I'll turn off the microphone with you. I will open the Bible and show you what God expects you to do to be saved and to be blessed and to be pleasing before God. Come on out! Step out! Be ye born again. Come on out! You step out and want to be saved, I'll turn this all off. We'll go find a little quiet spot somewhere. And I will teach you and show you the way to heaven. Black and white. Chapter and verse. And you can have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life today. And be saved. That's simple. Any simpleton, Proverbs chapter 1... And I don't say that with disrespect. Any simpleton, Proverbs chapter 1, can be saved. Any child, 5, 6, 7 years old, can be saved, according to the Scriptures. I don't even know what the age is. Salvation is set, not in stone. Yes. Salvation is set in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which take away our sins, which washes us from our sins, which sets us free from our sins, as far as the east is from the west. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Do you want to be washed of your sins? There's only one eraser. That eraser is red. That eraser is the precious blood of Jesus Christ without spot. Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, that is the only way. We are here to tell you that your death is coming. You know you're going to die. And when you die, you'll wake up somewhere in eternity. We hope you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. But if you will not adhere to what we preach to you about the Bible, don't be shocked when you wake up in hell. Because only Jesus saves. And don't be too shocked if you find a religious leader there too with you. 1 Corinthians uh, 11, I believe it is. 1st or 2nd Corinthians chapter 11. Don't be surprised if your minister is there with you. 
Not all ministers, preachers, priests are saved. Pulpit or television or radio. Only those that put their trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ are saved. Nothing will save you but Jesus. 